Caitlin Bristow and Jason Tardick. Hi. 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 Okay, you? I have to start off with this, you guys, because we were talking a little bit before this, and truly, I really mean this. You are the happiest I've ever seen you. Hey, <laughs> I can't believe people like can see that just through like Instagram because I get that a lot. People yeah. are like you. I mean, you know me, but yeah, a lot of people have been like, you can just see your genuine happiness. I'm like, you wouldn't say that yesterday because I'm PMSing and I was kind of a. <laughs> Facts. Um, but but you thank have you. A, a lightness to you and an ease around him. Yeah. That as many times as I've interviewed, you're always funny and charismatic and everything. But you seem at ease. Yeah. What is it about him that's <laughs> changing you? Not make me blush. Not to, no, not to take it away from you at all because you are a huge reason. But I feel like I'm just in a good place in life, and that you came into my life at such good timing. Yeah. Where I'm just like overall happy. I'm feel like I'm established in things. I just feel like I'm I'm just overall happy, and then I. Feel feel like he's kind of like a bonus to me because he's I'll, I won't get emotional but he's like the best person I've ever met and I'm like oh my gosh and he's he's my boyfriend like you just <laughs> I don't know I feel like you just you totally allow me to be myself mm -hmm. and he he like encourages me yeah it's nice yeah sometimes tell you to reel it in. yeah you do tell me to reel it in <laughs> but I need that I need that yeah, yeah. well <clears throat> I I guess I I mean, I'm probing a little bit, shocker, but here's the thing. <laughs> I've been in this situation before where you suddenly realize that maybe you never really knew what a good relationship was. Oh, absolutely. Is that how you're feeling? I just feel like I didn't realize a relationship could be this easy mm -hmm. and it, that it, I could be that happy with somebody. Like, it's just so easy. We mm -hmm. have just a really, really healthy communication, healthy relationship, and we build each other up. Yeah, yeah it's nice. <laughs> Are you? Is your silence echoing that? I'm echoing yeah. everything. No, I yeah. think it's... Um, we have a unique relationship in the fact that I think we both have seen a lot, we've done a lot, we've experienced the good, bad, and ugly in relationships. And I think as you kind of mature, you know what you want. And with Caitlin and I, we kind of have like a no BS type of attitude. We put everything out there. We're very transparent. We're very mm -hmm. forthcoming with everything. And sometimes that leads to almost too much of open communication. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we hold nothing back, and it allows us to grow uh, as, as one and as a team. And it's been awesome. Yeah. And we have yeah. a hell of a time doing it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Where is the danger area of too much communication? Yeah. Like when, you know, earlier today I take a chip. Like a like a nice gentleman, oh. I chew it with my mouth closed, okay. but it makes a crunch, and she's like, <laughs> can you not chew like that? I'm like, tell me what you would well, like I, me to do differently with that. Chewing and drinking sounds are a trigger for me. It's okay. a whole thing. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? I I'm think if that is what you are <laughs> yeah. having conflict about, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Has there been anything more significant that you've had to work through at this point? Well, I uh, really need to work on putting the toilet seat down after I taking fell the urination. In. Yeah, oh, that's, wow. yeah, that's okay. one thing well, I'm struggling. Anything danger. more serious? <laughs> <laughs> I just like got triggered there. I like, yeah. Yeah. I fell in that one time. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, we we just moved in together, yeah. what, like a week ago? Yeah. So I feel like uh, more Thanks. to come. Yeah. <laughs> so Happy one week. And we're doing, we're doing oh, yeah. crash course, right? Oh, we yeah. rescued the dog. We move in together. So we're we're doing it all at once. We're learning how we parent, how we can yeah. support yeah. and take the dog. I'll take the dog. Yeah. Um, so it's a crash course, and it's going well. Yeah. Well, can I ask you guys, I mean, you've both been in relationships before. How did you sort of know it is a good idea for us to dive in on these big things kind of all at once because moving in together, uh, adopting a dog together, yeah. it's like a baby. I yeah. mean, yeah. how did you decide, nope, we want to do all this right now? Yeah, I feel like we just had the confidence in our relationship. Yeah. I think, so, and I think the whole crazy thing about this whole Bachelor world is it like guts you up and opens you up. <laughs> and you talk about everything and anything and you become comfortable with yourself, your emotions. Yeah. And I think because of that, that's why you see so many people within the franchise um, have relationships, whether it's via a podcast or on a show or Paradise or whatever. So for you and I, we were just like so open. We know what we want. We know what we don't want. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're here. And it's a beautiful <laughs> we're thing. We're here. And we're here. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having us. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, but you know, before when I asked you about it, you said I don't want to get emotional, um, which it always, think, you know, I think, hey, it's kind of amazing that you're with somebody who can take you to that place that quickly, though, where you think, God, I could just get emotional talking about what a great guy he is. Yeah, he softens me up. Yeah. <laughs> he makes me all soft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like. I just. I don't know. I just feel. Well, maybe it's because I'm PMSing too. But I just feel like sometimes <laughs> I just get emotional from like just where I'm at. Yeah. And like what took me there. And I'm just. I don't know. I'm just. Just really happy. 
<laughs> I, I've always thought of you as this person who is so independent, such a hustler. Um, you've worked so hard to build this brand for yourself. But was there something missing in that now you feel like you have somebody who is pushing you even further than you could push yourself? Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how do I say this? Um, I just feel like we're such a good team where I do, like, I, I want to come up with all these, like, you know, the wine label that's coming out and the scrunchies, and I work with my team, and I like to think of myself as, as like, having a creative mind where he's, like, the brains. Not that I'm not smart. He's, uh, we're... Businessy. Yeah, he's very businessy, and I just feel like we work really well together, and yeah. it's, there, there's no competition. It's, like, we're both just super happy for each other when we have things going on, and we help each other more than, than feel like there's any kind of competition yeah yeah so you move into the house in Nashville mm -hmm. uh, do you bring any of your stuff is this fully furnished what is this moving process like <laughs> well, that's a good question. well so majority of my stuff I gave to a friend who's who just bought a home mm -hmm. but we have to redo a lot of the house so um, we're working on doing a lot to the house and then I think eventually we'll flip it here sooner than later yeah um, but you've only but, like you're yeah, you sold most of the stuff that was sold in your apartment. Stuff, he just brought, brought all of his clothes stuff, that we're going to go through. And then we do. We have a brand deal for furniture coming, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. <laughs> is this the house in Nashville that you were living in before? Or yes. did you guys get a new house together? No, this is the same, same house. Okay, it's the same, same house. house. Okay. So I, I decorated it with this girl, Jessica McCarthy, and I made it like exactly what my dream home would be. Like, I, I picked out everything with her. And Wayfair. And um, so, but we only did the bottom level of the house. So there's still a huge bonus room in another upstairs. I'm like totally tooting my own horn that I have a big house <laughs> yeah. here. But like there's other rooms that we're going to work on together and then eventually, um, yeah, sell it and, yeah. and then find a find our home. Yeah, so half the home isn't touched. So okay. there's not one thing on the other half. So we have to completely redo that. And then my dad and I went through the first weekend just like <laughs> home stuff, like basic things like changing your air filter. Yeah, like he even has lessons? her strengths, but <laughs> okay. um, I was like, what's an air filter? <laughs> things haven't been changed or taken care of in a while. So yeah. we're, we're cleaning it up. Yeah. I'm learning a lot. I have a landscaper. <laughs> Save it, clean it, build it, sell it. Yeah. On to the next one. There okay, go. I'm going to ask you a tough question here. Is yeah. part of selling it, I mean, I understood this house to be the house that you and Sean lived yeah, in together. Yeah, yeah. So is that part of selling it? Is this weird at all? Uh, no. Tell me. We talked about that, obviously, mm -hmm. before moving in. But I think because I had, it's not like we built it together and we designed it together. It was very much just like, it always felt like mine to the point where even when the breakup happened, he was like, obviously, this is your house. Like, you did this. Mm -hmm. And so it just feels like now something that... It, it doesn't have bad energy or bad juju in there. Like, it just feels like it's kind of my design, yeah. and then we're going to make it our own and everywhere else in the house, and then we're selling it because I always had planned to sell it anyways in Nashville because mm -hmm. Nashville market is hot. And, uh, <laughs> Look at this business so, yeah. 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 So uh, I've always actually planned on selling it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have you guys talked at all? I mean, he went on a podcast, talked about the breakup a lot. Yeah, that was weird. That was an interesting podcast just because I was like, I, I didn't want to really talk about it just because there's, you know, two sides to every story. You just, I didn't want it to get like, mm -hmm. you know, miscommunication or something gets lost. And, you know, so when he did the podcast, we talked about it and I was like, well, that's, you know, he can have his own feelings and I can know the truth and he can have his truth. And, and it just doesn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I was like, do I address anything on my podcast? But, you know, I just had moved forward already, so I just didn't want to, you know, go backwards at all. And so, no, we don't we don't talk. I mean, uh, sometimes I'd like to go steal the dog, but no, we don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Have the dogs met? No, oh. no. Okay. No, that would be weird. <laughs> I know you love those dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, got to ask you, too, about, uh, you know, there's some big Bachelor news has just broken. Yeah. Lauren Bushnell engaged. Yeah. I'm going to throw it out there. You've moved in together. You've got a dog together. Is this a discussion? Yeah. <laughs> What's funny is I actually zoomed in on a ring and I was like, look, it's the exact one I want. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's very similar. Yeah. No, that's congratulations to them, by the way. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, I, te I definitely saw that one coming. I was like, any day now they're going to yeah. get engaged. Like, yeah. it just felt like that was the next steps. But yeah, I mean, we talk about it. Yeah, it was ironic. Yesterday we had lunch in LA and mm -hmm. the table next to us is doing wedding planning. Who's taking and notes? Caitlin's like looking over there. I'm looking over there. We're talking. And all of a sudden, Caitlin's on Pinterest, looking at different you ring styles. You were googling a floating cake. Floating cake. That sounded kind of cool. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the place we're in? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
that's why we moved in together because we were just so ready to take the next step. Yeah. Like we just mm -hmm. had again the confidence in our relationship to take that next step. Where yeah. now that's naturally something we talk about anyways. But yeah, it's weird when it does move that fast. But again, uh -huh. we come from Bachelor World where this is actually taking it quite slow. <laughs> <laughs> like we've been together right. yeah. five years. Yeah, yeah. we are, we are yeah. just coasting. And the, the other thing is we're not getting any uh, any younger. Yeah. I mean, we both know what we want. I think before I know, getting engaged, chicken. it makes sense to. You know, to move in together and see what's next. And yeah. Make sure we can we're live together. That, yeah, <laughs> we can cohabitate. Yeah, and yeah. Okay. Go from there. yeah. So you guys have talked wedding. We've yeah. Talked. You know what kind of ring you want? Oh yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Great. It's, it's not a double halo. And it's not a I'm double halo. Told. I got told that that it is not that, that it looks like a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, I don't really care. What I do just you like want? That. Do you want to tell us what you want? Well, what I really like is just a simple band with a jig, fatty rock. Big fatty rock and a simple band. Yeah, and not you have ask small hands, so it's perfect. Not for much. Do you, do you know what kind well. of shape you want? We'll just no. Okay. <laughs> I said right, you rectangle, right? I like rectangle, I like square, and I like round. Just not teardrop. Not nothing against it because I like those two. Just not on my hand. I have boy hands. You have, you have teardrops on your hands. <laughs> I have teardrops. I really messed up my hands for like you know I've got tattoos and I bite my nails. It's really I just you know I just want something that can like just make my hands a little cuter. <laughs> I mean I look I think like you guys said you come from this world where things move quickly. Mm -hmm. You're at an age that you're at. Is there an, a, just an element of like this is working and it feels easy and let's follow yeah. our happiness. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what we're doing and I think that's why it is so easy is that we're not fighting anything, you know? Mm -hmm. We're just like surrendering to to how we feel and what comes naturally to us. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't I mean I'm speaking on myself again here but like I guess I, I sometimes I wonder if you felt this way, but you sort of feel like you were in a place for a while where, again, maybe you didn't even know like how stagnant you were, mm -hmm. and then like all of a sudden everything clicks. Yeah, things happen very quickly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is. It's uh, looking back now. I do. I was like, maybe I was a little lost, or maybe I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I I didn't understand how I felt. Like now, I just feel so confident in my feelings, mm -hmm. and I I think it's hard to come off that show, to be honest. Like for anyone, mm -hmm. and it just. It, it just wasn't, I mean, you want something to work because it's the show and you want something to be right, but it just wasn't right, and that's what it all comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think change today is like the only constant, mm -hmm. and I think so many people are afraid of change, and mm -hmm. they're afraid to take risks and sacrifice and know that they can be independently strong to find happiness, whatever means that is, whether it's going on a TV show, seeing how it works or doesn't work. Um, but I think in both of our situations, we had to make change to find one another. Um, difficult decisions at times and, and difficult times, but we did that. Yeah. And um, it's, yeah, it's crazy how know. just things change, like how things quickly shift from. Like I'm, I'm very open about certain things. Obviously, everything, not certain things, everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, like I was really in a really, really dark place for a while, just so confused. And then you know, I'm like. When you're in that place, you think that the world is ending and you're just so sad. And then it's like weeks later, I'm the happiest I've ever been. So yeah. I always say that on my podcast. I'm always like, because you know, I have a lot of young girls listening. And, you know, they think life is so tough. But it's like you don't know what's around the corner. Yeah. You just yeah. don't. I think what's also hard, too, is like we sometimes, you know, you want to share your happiness. But you didn't necessarily share all the depths of your sadness. Like maybe that feels hard. Yeah. And so I think sometimes people might perceive I turned this quickly, but they don't know right. everything you really exactly. process. Exactly. You know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ask my girlfriend over there. She, <laughs> she saw it all. She knows. <laughs> she, she was getting those late night calls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking wedding. Have we talked about kids? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. That's about kids. Yeah. We just talked about the what we're gonna name our name first, our kids. first daughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. I mean, we are really, really. Think, about, think about this timeline though. When you finish the show. It's usually a month or two before the lead starts again. Yeah. And they're engaged another month or two later. Crazy. So we live in a weird world, but <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really there. embracing it. Hey, okay. <laughs> what, what are you naming the first kid? Oh, I can't tell you. Okay. How many because kids are we having? I mean, I'm fine with one or two. Okay. I used to want five, oh. but now I'm like, okay, I'm turning 34 tomorrow, and I'm like, you know what? One. Great. So I want yeah. two dogs, three kids. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, we didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> you knew that. Three. I didn't know you wanted. Oh, maybe I did. Yeah. Three does sound nice, but I know. Well, that that probably won't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that sounds nice. Yeah, that sounds nice. But okay. hope you have something planned for the birthday. <laughs> yeah. What We're am done. I doing? TBD. Okay. Can't share surprises. Okay. Wow, he's proposing. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's no. what I said. <laughs> last, last night we were like talking about it and. <clears throat> We had like it was like a little bit of a surprise where some close friends were there, and I was like, "Here we go." 
This is happening. I was second to him, I'm like, you're proposing. And he was like, I'm not. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You will soon find out. Like, will you know? I hope not. Okay. But I'm such a, I just want to call him out. (laughs) It's like every day I'm like, is it today? Tomorrow? Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, have you guys met each other's families? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah uh-huh. The whole thing. Yeah. I love it. Okay. We, we actually, Chris Harrison, I don't know if you know him, um, he <laughs> actually got me set up at Callaway Golf um, not too long ago, oh. and our dads are going to meet for the first time oh, yeah. and get custom fitted for clubs there together. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got it for them. So for I've Policy. met Caitlin's family, and Caitlin has met my family, but they haven't met. Yeah. So I it'll be a great time. I can't believe that he coordinated a golf outing for them. Imagine That's shock that. News. I can't believe that. Yeah. Um, okay. We got to talk about a little of the other uh, Bachelor Bachelorette news. Yeah. Your boy Blake. Talk to me about him. Well, he's going on Paradise. Yeah. Team Blake's in. <laughs> no, you can't do that anymore. There, there are rumors that he might be getting into some trouble. Mm-hmm. There had been rumors that he has dated Christina Shulman. There was some talk about him flirting with Hannah G. What do you think Blake's going to do on Paradise? What are you worried about or feeling positive about? See, going into Paradise, I thought that him and Hannah G would be... I, I heard Hannah on Caitlin's podcast, and I know Blake. I thought they would be a great couple. So I was kind of hoping for that. They're very aesthetically So pleasing. I don't mm-hmm. know if, if that will come to fruition or not. Um... But I hope that, you know, what the, the advice I gave Blake was, like, follow your heart and, and be smart about how you follow it, especially because Paradise has so many twist turns in drama. The only thing is, I'll always, you know, there's always two sides to every story. So, you know, I've, I've heard You're so little... You know, no, I've heard <laughs> well, little Blake's an emotional guy. Stuff. So yeah. my, my thought with Blake is... How in, how emo- is he going to be crying all season long? Yeah, but he's also, like, you know, I think going into this, he's probably the most, just my opinion, probably the most sought after mm, guy there. The hot commodity. So you, you, right? yes. I think he is a it's hot gonna commodity. It's going to be the Blake so show. It's going to be, you know, he just, how is he going to handle it is the question mark. How does any guy, like you're a good looking guy, you've got, how many, there's probably going to be like five beautiful women yeah. wanting to like, you know, be with Blake and that's mm-hmm. got to be hard, you know, it's a, yeah. you know, tough life, Blake, but <laughs> that's got to be hard to juggle sure, and try and please him, everybody yeah. because trust me, dating more than one guy at the same time is very hard. Yeah. Dating one, more than one person at the same time, it's really hard and you just constantly hurt other people's feelings and then the whole world gets mad at you uh, when you're just doing what anyone else would do. Your prediction is the Blake show. Yeah. The Blake show. Okay, the Blake show. Um, what about Hannah? Hannah's season is underway. I will say that I think Hannah, in terms of her independence and her humor and owning who she is, she reminds me of you a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, she is the bachelorette who's probably done that the most since you. Mm-hmm. What do you feel watching her season? Do you see those similarities? Yeah, I see it. Like, I like that she speaks her mind, and I mean, she's a little saucier than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, <laughs> which is saying a lot. She, yeah, yeah, I'm saucy, but she is she's spicy saucy. Like she is really comes in hot. But I, I appreciate that because I don't feel like she's trying to be who she thinks she should be on that show. I think she's really being Hannah, and I think whoever she picks is going to be like not surprised after. Like they're not going to go home, and she's going to be a different way. Mm-hmm. We're getting like the true Hannah, and I mean, and you got to give her credit because y- you know you're going to get backlash, and you know you're going to get hated on on the internet. But she's seems to just be like, well, whatever, this is for me. And well, you've talked about the incredible backlash that you got yeah. on the show, yeah. um, being shamed, being shamed for your sexuality. Yeah. Um, what do you think Hannah has ahead for her, based on what we've seen is coming up? I mean, Jesus might still love her, but I'm not sure about the <laughs> Bachelor Nation world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it, she. I'm. I just want her to like just call me, Hannah. Call me. Look, I, I will talk you through everything. Um, the internet is not kind yeah. to people, who, women who talk about their sexuality. They're just not. Um, and it, what you have to do is just know that it's, I mean, she put it out there, it's who you are, and you can't be ashamed of it, and you just have to stand by your decisions and, and who you are, and, and it'll all turn out in the end the way it's supposed to, because it's just, uh, whenever you're true to yourself, things work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You might go through a rough mm-hmm. patch, but in the end, it'll work out for you, because being true to yourself is the best thing you can do. There's also unwritten rules this season that are being crossed, yes. right? When you're, a- as a cast member, You understand she's dating other guys. Mm -hmm. You understand when the fantasy suite comes around, there are three other people. But an unwritten rule is that when you're in the relationship, you talk about your relationship and really don't get into the weeds about some of the specifics associated with what's going on. And in that trailer, 
we saw just the opposite of that. I'm not yeah. sure that it, we've ever it, seen anybody it, on the show ask the lead, have you had sex with other people? That right. is crazy. And what's going to be interesting to me to see is who will get more backlash for it, Luke right. or Hannah? Yeah. My guess is that Hannah will get major backlash for talking about having sex on the show. It's just so interesting because we're, you know, we're in a time where yeah. it's becoming more of a normal conversation, but in Bachelor world, it's still so, like, faux pas to... Is that the word? Faux pas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to talk about mm -hmm. it. And it's, like, it's such a gray area. Like, where is the line? Because it's, like... People watch the show. They know there's fantasy suites. They know there's sex that goes on in the fantasy suites. It's just but all of a sudden we're talking about it and it's like, <gasps> like yeah. you know, and it's at first when The Bachelorette started, it was like, I can't believe they would have one woman dating all these men or I can't believe all these women would date one guy. And now it's like, that's such a normal thing yeah. and that we're like, okay, can't wait to tune in Monday night. But now it's like sex is becoming a topic. But it would be interesting to see what the assumption to the public eye is with the fantasy suite because for so long there never was that whole after the morning of mm -hmm. videotaping. That's then just a couple season. weeks, yeah, then they do the morning after, then you start to think, and now it's out there. So mm -hmm. I'm curious what the public reaction will be. Yeah. Would you advise a bachelorette to not talk about whether she'd had sex with contestants or not? Just because of the backlash, or what would you well, say? Well, it depends. No, I don't think you should not do it because of the backlash. I think you should talk about it with whoever you pick and have open yeah. conversations about that. But I don't think you should worry about the backlash because you'll get backlash for eating a banana. Yeah, you can <laughs> walk like, the wrong way. Yeah, you're gonna, it's, you're gonna get backlash no matter what. Putting yourself in those shoes, if Luke, you know, if you'd been the one in that conversation with Luke P, mm -hmm. how would you have reacted? Well, it's so funny because we talked about this, that she's so decisive with everything she does. But with Luke P, she's so indecisive. And we don't get it as viewers, but we don't, you know, you can't judge somebody for how they feel. But I'm just like, just, just buy it. Just get, you know that it's not your guy. If you're sitting there with him, with a guy and the guy is telling you, if you've had sex with other guys, I'm out of here. Oh, that conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd <laughs> Jason's be like, shaking. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay. Well, bye, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like... Yeah, see, you wouldn't want to be it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's, and I don't know if you have any, like, behind-the-scenes uh, context into how all this goes, but is it approached differently with, like, the fantasy suites and all that? How does production approach it with you as a lead, or and if at all differently as a female lead? Like, do they give you advice on how to handle it? Do they? What do they tell you? No, they don't really give you advice. You, I mean... They are, like, your only friends and people you talk to when you're in that world, so... I feel like you talk to them just as friends, so they, I don't know, they kind of go off different people like what you're feeling, mm -hmm. you know? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like they necessarily give you advice, they're more just talking with you yeah. through it. Like how you, uh, Caitlin, how yeah, do you like feel I, about it? Yeah, and they'll, they'll direct you as to what the day will look like yeah. and when they'd come in the morning, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a really um, embarrassing question for you guys. Okay. Say that somebody wanted to get busy outside the fantasy suites, mm -hmm. which has happened on the show before. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that with production? Because you're like out, and like maybe you've got your cl like. Do you? Well, here's the thing: they don't let you hang out with people outside of, like, okay. the, yeah. And if they do, I'm like l learned the hard way that if if they do that, it, they're up to something. Okay. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they don't like like you can't. If I was you know on the show, and let's say a, a Ben was like. Hey, can I see Caitlin? They'd be like, "Well, mm. cameras have to be on. You have to be mic'd like this. You can't just hang out with them Got it. off camera." Okay. Yeah. I'm still in contract. <laughs> <laughs> you answer all these. Good questions. answer. I'm not Good answer. This whole interview. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, she's free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? It, you didn't have to give the ring back, did you? No. Did you keep the ring? Yeah. What are you doing? You saw it? What are you doing? I have no idea what to do. <laughs> like, it, I sometimes I forget I even have it still, yeah. just because you know what? What am I gonna do with it? I don't know. Yeah. I have mine. I don't want know. It? <laughs> <laughs> we can go sell them together. Yeah. We'll do a podcast yeah. about it. <laughs> Let's get an auction going auction. here. Auction. Yeah. Part Some of, of the money part can of the go proceeds to charity. Of charity. Yeah. I'll be the part, auctioneer. Part of. <laughs> part of. Business yeah. minded. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some news also came out about Jed, a front yes. runner. A report that he had a girlfriend up to right before going on the show. Everyone does. Is that you guys' <laughs> take? I mean, it, it seems to me like we get the story every season, and yet people freak out about it every season. Yeah. What do you both think? I get, judge yeah, him, when don't I, judge him. When I heard that, I was like, 
Yeah, I was waiting for that. Like, I was waiting for someone to have a girlfriend. Happens every season. But, I mean, at the, you can't judge anyone for it because sometimes you really have no idea you're going to fall in love on that show. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go here for the opportunity. Maybe I'll see you when I get back. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. And then you go and you actually find love and you're like, whoa, I didn't think that was going to happen. So it's not like he, he might have, you know, had... He admitted he had different intentions going into the show. Yeah. So So I stuck when when Jed had said that his intentions were to go on the show and promote his music business, I stuck up for him because I thought it was great to be proactive about what you're doing and how that has changed. Mm -hmm. But I think if you now correlate him openly putting it out there that his only intention was to promote his music business, mm -hmm. and then you couple that with some of the comments that his girlfriend are now saying about the night before and then you tie in the twist of the gentleman who was there the night before the night one mm -hmm. who had a girlfriend right and you saw Hannah's reaction you go yeah. down that road of people yeah. saying well Hannah what kind of standards do you have and and she's gonna have to address all that yeah sure yeah, yeah. And I mean like I think it's as like this season goes on different things come out about different people and she, like that's got it's got to be challenging to, mm -hmm. to work through that and then you know talk I to each person and things like that ever, it's just so crazy how much can come out because of the internet now it's like who, it's, who knows? I, I mean I know they released some of the guys early this season like for that reason like yeah. see if they could suss out if yeah. the internet could be the yeah. background yeah. check uh, which makes sense um, last question for you guys about the show I think that this season is in uncharted territory with how much religion is being discussed. Mm -hmm. um, and Hannah has said that she's grateful they showed it because they even in the very first episode showed her like praying before she went mm -hmm. out with the guys and mm -hmm. everything. Uh, did you experience other people like talking about their faith, talking about religion that kind of never made it to edit? I had a very deep conversation with Ben Higgins about religion because he's quite religious and, and we did go there. It's just, I think they don't usually air that stuff because of, I don't, is that boring TV, maybe? I mean, maybe boring, maybe kind of people say don't talk about religion and politics, you know, that I remember, kind of thing. I remember yeah. Rebecca had asked me about politics, and then she had asked me who else in the house and where they stood, and I said, those are conversations you have to have. And I think this, it even goes back to, you know, the Jed scenario or other scenarios. You wonder, you know, right now we're down to, what, six people? How many people are left? Eight Weirdly, people? Weirdly, there's like... There's eight. Yeah, so you lot. always <laughs> wonder, if some, of these, some of the conversations you see post-show if they would be down to, or if it would influence the lap, the people that are on there right yeah. now. Right. So. Do you think the show should get into those topics more? Absolutely. I do, yeah. I, like, they're important conversations. To have, yeah, I think if, when you're in a relationship and you're talking about a family and raising a family, I think you should know each, at least people's stance yeah, on gonna, critical things. If you're going to get engaged at the end of it, and this is going to be your yeah. partner, you should know where they stand with these right. topics. And especially, like... Even you should have money conversations. How yeah. you were, like yeah. how you were raised to think about money. How like s tough conversations should be had if you're gonna actually make this relationship. And, and last. I think that's yeah. what we're seeing on this. So it's like like Hannah's uh, the last episode. Hannah was losing it because she's like, all we're talking about and all you guys are talking about is Luke P. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you guys. Right. And I want and th them and to you, get to know her. Yeah, like, and she wants she wants someone. Well, can I ask right? you guys? I mean, you both obviously made it very far in your respective <laughs> seasons. If you had had more of those conversations or been encouraged to have, would your outcome have been different? No. <laughs> or maybe yeah. would your experiences after the show have been different? Like, would, you know, did, I, I guess I'm essentially, did you and Sean have, like, bigger conversations to get through once filming was ended because yes. you didn't tackle it they on just, the show? Yeah, we did. It's just they, they again, didn't air it. Uh, so, okay. yeah. So you did talk about some of that stuff yeah. during filming. Yeah. Got it. It is, uh, it's, it's, I have to admit, it's stuff I'd like to see more because I sometimes mm. feel like I'm watching two hours of them being like, "I today was amazing." And you're like, mm. Did you Come get on, into I know. what? It's do you so believe true. in like, you know, etc.? But yeah. yeah, she made a great point when she was like, "You guys don't even know why I'm here or mm -hmm. anything about me." I was like, "Oh damn!" Like that's, <laughs> that's so true. That was so well true. said. Yeah. 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 So you guys are busy bees. Yes. Living in Nashville together. Does it feel like you're living together yet, or do you travel so much for work and do all these things that it hasn't sunk in yet? Yeah. I feel like we have been traveling so much yeah. since I moved in that yeah. I'm, I still need to unpack everything. Yeah, you yeah. still so haven't unpacked. The days we have had there have been fantastic, and we wake up with coffee and we joke around. We have this power hour. We sit down and like talk about business mm -hmm. things and what we have going on, and we'll end our end our night with a glass of wine. And <laughs> I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, are you ending I, your night with a glass of your wine? Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, Lauren, for how, that segue. How great does it feel to freaking have your own wine? It, honestly, <laughs> it is a dream come true. I'm not just saying that. It, I, since I had my first sip of wine ever in life, <laughs> I was like, like this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Like everything in my life has led me to have a wine label. This man, everything, and it's just like, oh, here we are. We have arrived. <laughs> I'm supposed Amazing. to be here. And yeah. it is delicious. Yeah. Like you will tell, I, I am always like very critical, and we talk about things, and I'll like give feedback. This wine is, especially for the price point, is so smooth. You're, right? you're setting us all up for success, Caitlin. You've got, you can pull our hair back with the scrunchie. Yeah. We can listen to the podcast off yeah. the vine. We can drink a glass of the wine during it. Yeah. And we can aspire thing. to a great relationship. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Cheers to that. We need some wine to cheers. I know. Would you guys do a reality show together? I think so. Oh, you do? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Um, I wouldn't. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. No, I would. I would. I think we'd have a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any advice for Hannah moving forward with the rest of the season? Hannah, if you're watching this, I support you and it's going to be a rough go. Buckle up, but call me because I have your back. Love you. How hard was it for you when you were going through that? That was the worst. Because I, I, I genuinely can't, like, I couldn't sleep. I would cry every night. I lost so much hair. I was just, I felt so defeated by everybody, but I was like, I wouldn't change a thing because this is how, this is, you know, you, it doesn't work, even if it didn't work. You just don't get to where you're supposed to be by being someone, by trying to be somebody else. You mm -hmm. just don't. So it's hard. It's really hard. And people, you know, always think you're a character on TV. Mm. They don't actually think for two seconds that you're a real human being with um, emotions and these feelings. And that, you know, it's hard when somebody even says, like, ew, your hair looks terrible. Like that, you're like, ouch. And you can't even imagine yeah. the words that come out of people's mouths for well, what they attack you with. And it sounds like, honestly, a lot of the fandom does have a long way to go with how we look at women talking yeah. about their sexuality on mm -hmm. TV versus men. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's it's wild. Yeah. Like, Colton's vir virginity was such a big thing, such too, though. Big topic. But it was almost more like, like a funny joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 